Okay, what I did in class today, and this is because it was Student Information Day, I dropped back to Plan B. I had not planned well for this, and uh, wound up with really a very good lesson. So, what we're doing is we're checking out how to add and subtract sig significant figures, and they follow different rules than multiply and divide. But addition and subtraction both follow the same rules. So let's go ahead and look and see if you can add up these numbers. Okay, would you, um, uh, I'd like you to stop the, report, the recording and add up these numbers and see how you do with it. And then we'll go from there. So what I did in class today is after everybody taking their try at it, we went ahead and did this. Uh, I actually added everything up to let you check and see what you've done. So I'm going to go ahead and add this up. This part is pretty easy. This is something that you're familiar with. You've done this since you were in grammar school. So it shouldn't be an issue. Did I add that up right? Okay, 321.115. Everybody got that? Yeah? Okay, good. No. No. Okay. So we agreed that this is the correct number. Now, what we want to do is figure out how many sig figs. And the sig figs for addition and subtraction are a little different than anything that you've ever worked with before, probably. So what I'm doing is, first of all, we'll put a pointer on the screen. Okay, so I look first of all at this column right here. Now, on the first row, do we have something in this column? Yes? Okay, we have the 5. Do we have anything in this column on the second row? No. Okay, so we have to go to the, second, to the next row over, or I'm sorry, the next column over, and we're going to look here. Do we have something on all rows? We do not. So we go to the first row that has numbers in each row. So this is where we're actually going to draw the line, and this line will indicate where the sig figs can go to. Sig figs to the right of that are not sig figs anymore. So for this guy, this and this, we lose their accuracy. Why? Because this guy is not as accurate as this guy is. Okay? And this guy here is not as accurate as this one is. So we draw that line to indicate where the accuracy is coming to an end. And now we go back and we look and we say, all right, let's go to the right of the line and see if that is a number that is 5 or greater. It is not, so we're not going to round up. We're just going to lop the whole thing off. And what we end up with is 321.1. All of those are sig figs, and we'll see why in just a minute. So, we now want to put this guy into scientific notation. So, what's he going to look like in scientific notation? Where is the decimal going to go? Yeah, it's going to be 3.21. Here, let's move this over. So that, here we go. Move this guy over so it lines up. I love being able to do that. 3.21. One, and so you can see we moved it one, two times. So what's our power of 10 have to be? 10 squared, right? And that's our final answer given to the right number of secrets. Okay. Remember we always have to, when we put in a power of 10, which we put in the two here, we have to see how many places we moved it over and then we have to put it. Uh, we have to put it back. Ooh, that's ten to the minus two. I moved the wrong. Uh, we got to get the number back, or we got to get the decimal back here because that's where it was originally. So this is three point two one one times ten to the minus two. Did I lose anyone? Yeah. Question. Okay, one of the students questioned me, and absolutely, I have made a mistake, so let's go ahead and fix that. This is definitely 10 squared, and I 
I was looking at this backwards from the way I should. <laughs> I still want it to be a negative. Okay, here's the plus. Now I won't mess that up again. Okay, so yes, this number, this decimal had to go back one, two, and that goes with a positive. Absolutely. I was thinking backwards and thinking this was the original and that was what we changed to, which is absolutely not the case. Okay, so that, that one, are, are we okay with this now? Thank you for catching me on that. Alright, let's go to this problem now and let's go ahead and add everything up. We got 6 here and a 5, 1, 1, 1, and then we have our decimal here and that's 11, 13, carry the 1, so we get 333.1156. Okay, on this column, do we have something on every line? No. Nor do we here, nor do we here, nor do we here. Oh, yeah, there we go. No, no. Okay, this, this one does not have one on every line, but this column right here is good all the way up and down. So, our sig figs have to end right here. Is this starting to make a little sense? A little bit? Okay. So now from here I have to look to the right, one digit, and is this greater or less than five? Less than. So I cannot uh, carry anything over and now my final answer is going to be three, three, three. Actually not my final answer, but that's the, that's the number with the right number of sig figs. Okay, so this number now has to be changed to scientific notation. So I'm going to three, where's the decimal? Point. Point, point here, and then three, three. And what's the power of 10 to get it back to this place? Yeah, two squared again, or 10 squared. 10 squared again, like it was in our last one, our power of 10 was also 10 squared. Okay? Now, would you all, especially the people at home, I'm going to stop the recording so that you can run this next one and see if you can get the right number of sig figs. It's a challenging one. Give it a shot. What I just told the class was that the decimal right here makes these two zeros significant and we'll find out why in just a minute when we go through the sig figs rules. And that's counting sig figs the easy way. Uh, a, a, a paper that you guys printed quite a while ago now. This zero is not significant. Okay, so when you're rounding, you have to take that into account. Okay, just a second. So we're gonna we're gonna add this guy up now, and this goes one o oh, carry the one. That's seven ten. One o oh, carry the one. 8, 9, 10, and 7, 10. And this becomes 9, and this becomes 2. Yeah? Okay. So, is, the question is, is this 0 a significant, is this a significant number? Aha, it's not. So, let's see how the rounding goes first. We're going to draw the line right here. And you say, Mr. Wigger, we've got something in every row. That is true. But this is not a significant number, which is why I told you about that earlier. So, we're going to round here. There's nothing to carry. So, the number is going to become 2970. But there's no decimal here on the end of this which makes this significant figure not sig uh, which is making this a non-significant number. And we're going to have to write this in scientific notation. So let's go ahead and put the decimal where it ought to be, which is 2.97. Now, why didn't I write the zero? Why am I not writing the zero? it's not a significant number. So if I write a zero here, I'm going to add to the number of significant figures. So now, and here's where you got to keep your head on straight. 
What's the power of 10? Yeah. No, not squared. Because you can't, you can't make this number fewer digits with your power of 10. So where is it going to go? See, we started out right, right, uh, right here with this zero. That's where the decimal was, but there was no decimal. It's just a placeholder to make that in the thousands instead of the hundreds. But when we write the number here, we cannot write the non-significant numbers. So the power of 10 has to make up for it, and the power of 10 then would be? Cubed, absolutely. And so this would be our final answer. So for those of you at home, uh, you probably want to watch my video on on uh, counting sig figs the easy way and then come back to this and do this one and you'll know exactly how to handle it. Okay, when we subtract 200 from the 7166.051, that's the answer that we get before we do any rounding. Okay, which tells us with this decimal right here, tells us the size of the number. Now, do we have any do we see the 200 doesn't have anything in the po in the thousands, the hundredths, or the tenths? But it does have a zero here. But is this zero significant? No, no because there's no decimal in the number. And is this zero significant? No. no. So we're we're down to looking here. We have numbers on both lines, and both numbers are significant because they're non-zero numbers, so definitely they're significant. And that means we're going to draw the line between here and here. Now we look next door. Is 6 bigger than 5? It is. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this number, this over here, and now we have 70, or actually we have 7,000 because these guys go away, right? But the number is still in the thousands. But the significant figures end after the zero. Okay, so this is the last sig fig. But we can't put a decimal here, can we? Because we changed the size of the number. So, what we do is we rewrite this in scientific notation as 7 point zero. See, I'm taking this zero right here and calling it significant by putting the decimal in. And then I have the times, and this would be 10 to the what? 10 to the third. And that is it, folks. That's how we do it. Thanks for watching.